you. Unique event of this kind uh, devoted to nutrition. Aging is the cause of death for most age-related diseases. And it can be said uh, that it's becoming one of the main reasons for death in developed countries. These are uh, American data for the last 10 years. And we see that mortality for cardiovascular diseases, neurodegenerative diseases, uh, is growing exponentially with age. So this is one of the key problems of today's biomedical science. The successes of medical science, uh, the uh, introduction of hygiene, the improvement of nutrition leads to certain progress. And we see that healthy uh, life, since uh, healthy lifespan at birth rose across the world by, five, by, by more than five years. But we're still, uh, we still have a large potential to tap into because there are um, people who live long more than 100 years, centenarians, they become disabled much later, uh, like 20 or 30 years later than the general population. That's 20 to 30 years of working age. And uh, the research in animal models shows that it's possible to slow down the process of uh, of aging through various interventions. For example, modifying diet can prolong life of mammals uh, by more than 50%. Genetic modifications are record-breaking. Muta mutation or superactivation of certain genes in model animals uh, increases the lifespan and slows down aging by a factor of several times. Uh, there are examples of gene therapies when intervention into a genome of an adult body increased lifespan by 20 percent. And there are various drugs that can slow down the aging process and prolong life and healthy lifespan. Knowing rather a lot about molecular pathways connected to aging and longevity, we can see that many of those pathways are cellular. And here we see certain proteins that are interconnected this way or the other by functional uh, links. Uh, many of them are regulated by nutrients, affected by nutrients. and. Uh, an obvious idea, can we use combinations of nutrients and, and change nutrition to regulate the genetic mechanism associated with aging and longevity? I would like to present you a review of what we know right now and how we can use it. The influence of low-calorie uh, diet on longevity. This is the uh, the data on various model objects, starting from uh, single-cell organisms and up to mammals. And we see that restricted diet leads to increased lifespan. Professor Walter Longa and house colleagues from California has shown that it's not necessary to restrict diet for uh, for life. We can do it intermittently to increase lifespan and to slow down the aging process. For example, to increase the number of stem cells in certain organs, including the brain, which helps uh, to improve regeneration, memory, and uh, metabolic processes. 
about 10 years ago, a certain research has shown that it's not about the caloric value of nutrition as such, but rather in the composition of nutrients. Linda Partridge, for example, has shown that if you use uh, 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 nutrients of similar caloric value, but you limit sugars or limit proteins, uh, lifespan will be different. The limitation of sugar prolonged life, but limitation of proteins gave a much longer lifespan, even though the caloric values were the same. So it's not about calories as such. Another interesting fact, it's enough to restrict to a necessary minimum the use of just one amino acid of, of, uh, of an essential, essential, essential amino acid. But if we limit it enough, experiments in mice and rats shows a sizable increase in lifespan through regulation of just one nutrient. And we know now uh, methionine activates one of the pathways linked to, in, to accelerated aging. It's mTOR regulated through methionine and restriction of this amino acid uh, slows down accelerated aging on the cellular, cellular levels. This is the plan of my talk and these are the principles of nutrition which in principle can lead to healthy longevity of course this is balance in essential nutrients also it's the the uh, suppression of certain uh, signal pathways the uh, influence of cellular stress uh, the uh, suppression of inflammation, uh, the uh, AGs, uh, the, the levels of carbohydrates in our uh, diet, and uh, the microbiota and uh, mutagenic components in our, in our diet. We know that the excess of certain nutrients like fructose, galactose, and uh, trans fats leads to accelerated aging processes and uh, and decreased wor working ability but uh, the uh, lack of certain other micro elements uh, vitamins prebiotics uh, fibers both soluble and insoluble uh, accelerates the aging while its presence decreases the rate. I have already mentioned the uh, key protein. Uh, this is kinase mTOR. Um, when there are enough nutrients in the cell, it activates a biosynthesis of protein and the growth and the division of cells. At the same time, it switches off the mechanism that increase the cell stability to stress factors because these systems of stress response are energy consuming and when a cell is okay it doesn't need it that's what it thinks but at the same at the same time increasing the uh, growth and division of cells it accelerates our aging because these protective mechanisms when they are switched off uh, the number of of errors increase increases uh, we know that it can suppress the activity of this ferment uh, and it's contained in various nutrients and various products so without starving a cell we can launch the mechanisms that regulate starving fasting and other stresses uh, that are related to suppression of mTOR and here we see some of these of these um, uh, nutrients like curcumin which is a part of curry certain certain fatty acids 
uh, certain uh, elements in olive oil, tea, cabbage, spices. We see, uh, well, red, uh, uh, these are the elements whose excess activates uh, the signal pathway and aging. What Kinaz Mtor suppresses is being actively studied, studied. and one of the key mechanisms uh, is autophagy. A cell, when necessary, can digest damaged structures, and it gives it a chance to reutilize certain amino acids, fats, to build its own structures. And this process works when, when people are fasting, uh, when there are not enough nutrients, the cell begins to digest itself from within. It's good, strangely enough, because a damaged structure, an old structure of the cell, is being reworked and a cell rejuvenates from within. mTOR suppresses this process, and at the same time we know that there are certain elements like soy or physalis, ginseng, uh, red rice, uh, grapefruit, which activate the process of autophagy. Even when uh, the diet is normal, uh, these processes are launch, launched inside the cell, this, these processes of rejuvenation. Stress resistance is regulated by a number of proteins. I will not speak about them very much in detail, but in any case, uh, we can increase uh, cells' stress resistance that leads to uh, to accumulation of uh, of errors through a diet. And here we see examples of inhibitors. Uh, of things that inhibit uh, stress resistance on cellular level. The key role in stress resistance is played by a transcription factor, FOXO. It's interesting to note that in many researches regarding longevity genetics, uh, there were certain peculiarities in, in, in uh, this family of genes. They suppress tumors in model animals. The activation of FOX increases longevity, stress resistance. It helps s maintain uh, the number of stem cells. It activates autophagy, suppresses inflammation. And uh, there are data that certain nutrients, certain foods, activates activate the work of this transcription factor that slow down the aging process. Uh, as regards metformin, a well-known drug, uh, perhaps some people have heard about the AMPK kinase. When a cell doesn't have enough um, energy at the low level of ATF, uh, the activity of this kinase increases which makes it possible to slow down a tumor mutation of cells. Uh, it activates autophagy, the oxidation of fatty acids, uh, normalizes metabolism. And uh, the activation of AMPK uh, can be done not just pharmacologically, but also using certain nutrients, uh, various biologically active nutrients, uh, which is uh, good news, uh, because combining certain products in your diet and uh, eating them more often, you can activate mo molecular pathways of longevity. Uh, cell stresses uh, lead to different modifications. Uh, and. Uh, inside the cells, uh, there is a certain station which distributes uh, 
elements and modifies them. And uh, when there is stress, uh, those transportation routes are, are broken. And uh, as a result, uh, there is a stress aggregation of um, uh, broken uh, elements, and uh, then it also leads uh, to aging, and it's uh, a cause of uh, many diseases, as it is sclerosis, um, cirrhosis, uh, metabolic syndrome, etc. And we know. Uh, that when it's too much of uh, cholesterol, uh, which appears uh, when when you keep for a long time uh, meat, fish, uh, refrigerated, or dry milk can have them. Uh, those saturated fat uh, acids can cause uh, stress of endoplasmatic uh, network in the cell, and. It also limits methanine and uh, some other uh, some other elements, which can uh, slow down this process, which leads to aging. As for inflammations, uh, uh, when uh, cells lose uh, their ability. Uh, to divide, they stop functioning. They also activate uh, signal uh, food paths uh, that lead to inflammation. And inflammation uh, actually uh, communicates to other cells that this particular cell is uh, in some bad conditions, something happens to it. And then this inflammation uh, is going further and further and damage other cells. And uh, this is sort of a cycle. Uh, and while aging, uh, systems uh, uh, start having chronic inflammation. It's well. Uh, it's a known work where inhibition of inflammation uh, gave the result of uh, a prolongation of lifespan, uh, and uh, also inflammation plays uh, its part uh, in uh, destroying an FKB, which is important element which helps uh, to uh, survive stress. But uh, when, uh, when it's active for too long, it also, uh, it also causes excessive aging. But also there are some products. Uh, they can inhibit this uh, chronic inflammation and can be potential protectors. Uh, for example, mustard and uh, curcum. Uh, curcumin, uh, pepper, and some spices, or uh, uh, brown rice, propolis, uh, soy, spinach, uh, cabbage. Uh, they all have such elements. One of the causes of inflammation uh, uh, in uh, old age, uh, it's uh, residues of uh, lysine and other proteins. Uh, this uh, elements can uh, uh, activate uh, uh, processes in cell walls. And uh, as a result, they form uh, the end products of uh, uh, glycation, AGEs. Uh, which cause damage inside cells, and uh, one uh, one of the examples is complication diabetes, uh, chronic inflammation, uh, which uh, causes atherosclerosis, fibrosis, and uh, other uh, unpleasant side effects. Uh, we don't always know that uh, some products uh, that we consume uh, can have such uh, glycation and products and cause such effects when, for example, we fry uh, or put our food uh, in the oven or use soy sauce or uh, some soft drinks or caramel or when we uh, drink whiskey. Uh, 
and beer, dark beer, it all uh, gives excessive stress on uh, our system, uh, this glycation and products. Also, uh, they can uh, form inside our body when our sugar levels are high. And uh, here there are products which have a high glycemic index. The higher this index, uh, the more likely uh, uh, this process, uh, which uh, causes inflammation factors of the uh, glycation and products. And uh, when we reduce uh, consumption of uh, uh, so-called uh, quick, uh, we uh, actually uh, we actually uh, uh, stop uh, developing these processes, and uh, there are some products on screen uh, which can uh, improve considerably uh, our health. Uh, these are products with uh, average glycemic index, which uh, uh, do not influence uh, this too much. And also, uh, there is uh, this stress, glycemic stress, for how long we can keep a high level of sugar in our blood. And uh, uh, this glycemic load, uh, uh, the rate of increase of the level of sugar in the blood and how much will rise this level and how long it will last at a high level. It's interesting that uh, some products which have high glycemic load, uh, still uh, high glycemic index but low glycemic load, like fruit, and it's good for us. Uh, we need to uh, say that glycemic index is estimated by glucose, but there are some sugars which we don't mention much, but they are more dangerous from the point of view of end products, or glycation end products, uh, than glucose. For example, uh, there was an experiment in Oregon University uh, when they uh, made biscuits with uh, saccharose, fructose and lactose. And it appeared that uh, y y you can see the color uh, and uh, saccharose is uh, uh, fructose actually has uh, more potential for end uh, glycation and products. Uh, so when they give uh, give recommendation to use fructose instead of glucose, it's probably not the best recommendation, uh, while, while lactose is in the middle between the three. It's uh, an interesting fact uh, that uh, some research shows that birds have uh, no activity of uh, those uh, uh, RAGs. But we know that birds live much longer than mammals of the same uh, body mass. And uh, at the same time, it's a uh, high body temperature. Uh, Probably that's why they don't age so quickly, because of those blood glucose levels. Also, there are inhibitors of uh, glycation. If we uh, consume uh, uh, these products more often, then uh, we can uh, reduce uh, this harm uh, that glycation and products uh, cause. Uh, also, uh, uh, there are certain uh, types of, of uh, degeneration, cancer, diabetes, uh, and uh, other changes, and prebiotics. First of all, uh, 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 these products uh, which are taken by microbiota are the factors that optimize microbiota and slow down our aging processes. Uh, for example, we showed uh, that uh, certain types of pectins uh, can increase lifespan and activate mechanisms uh, connected with uh, longevity of life. Also, damage of DNA, uh, ionizing, uh, and uh, uh, which also in increases with age, mutagenes of uh, environment, also uh, makes us age more quickly and increase risk of cancers, tumors. 
and anti-mutagens. Uh, uh, the they uh, actually protect our cells uh, and uh, they uh, activate uh, healing processes. Uh, they also are in some products and here uh, you can uh, see uh, uh, those uh, substances. Uh, there are also, also natural substances with anti-aging effects. Probably I don't have time uh, to talk about it, but um, uh, there are certain recommendations. We've already uh, heard uh, that it's good to reduce calorie intake, probably sometimes intermittent short fasting uh, when we decrease calories uh, to minimum. Maybe uh, several times a week we just uh, miss one meal. Also, uh, it's good to restrict methionine. It's uh, close to vegetarian diet. And, uh, but we should remember about fructose, lactose, and other sugars and cholesterols, which lead to inflammation processes. Uh, olive oil, uh, despite of the fact that uh, it's not uh, very high, uh, uh, in uh, it's it's actually very good because it uh, has quite a lot of uh, very useful elements. Uh, also, it's uh, better to restrict uh, consumption of uh, red meat and its byproducts. Uh, uh, and uh, also compensate for magnesium and vitamin K1 uh, and polyamine, which uh, are inducers of autophagy, and uh, they are, are in mushrooms, beans, grapefruit. And we can say that medicine of the future will probably be more concentrating not on treatment of diseases, but prevention of the diseases through regulation of uh, and personalization of our diet, physical and uh, activity, and also uh, in combination with gene therapy and protection. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, and another question was about vitamin K. Uh, uh, how uh, how important uh, this K vit vitamin is for our diet? It's a very good question. Uh, it's uh, vitamin K2 is produced by microbiota, uh, which uh, lives uh, in our body. And uh, the research that I mentioned uh, in my paper uh, were. Uh, carried out uh, in connection with additional consumption of K2. When people were prescribed this vitamin and they took this vitamin, it's a very uh, well-known supplement, and uh, it was shown that uh, uh, a very good effect. But uh, as K2 is uh, synthesized of by microbiota, normally we should be provided by this vitamin naturally. And uh, I think that everything that can be regulated through uh, our diet without uh, additional consumption of uh, chemically, uh, chemical elements uh, should be done through the diet and normalization of our physiological uh, state and helping our microbiota to produce it rather than take it as a pill. Thank you very much. Uh, Valery Polnovsky, I want to ask about vitamin C. Uh, vitamin C, uh, uh, it, it's well known that it should be taken in big quantities, but la uh, last research showed that that sometimes there are inflammations and cancer cells also stimulated by C vitamin. So, uh, uh, what uh, what actually should we take and what we shouldn't? Uh, as for antioxidants, uh, it's a very interesting question because now there are many. Uh, there is a lot of research that shows uh, that too much of antioxidant uh, is bad for you. They are actually act uh, in a contrary way that we expect. Uh, and uh, this way they activate processes that we would like to inhibit. Uh, so it's imp very important to avoid uh, overtaking 
antioxidant. It's not just vitamin C, but also vitamin E. Uh, because uh, uh, we have clinical data that E vitamin uh, can influence and uh, uh, raise probability of having cancer. Um, also, it is possible uh, that having, when we uh, eat fruit and uh, greens, we have enough. Oh, we actually give ourselves enough antioxidants, and then we shouldn't take supplements. One more qu uh, question. Uh, how do uh, metformin is now uh, very well, very advertised? How do you, what do you think about it? Well, uh, this is uh, also, this is a drug that has uh, certain side effects, and it's very important to uh, look at your own health, talk to your doctor, and you shouldn't just take this drug uh, without a uh, doctor's advice. For example, uh, if someone has problems with the kidneys or drinks too much or uh, does a lot of uh, uh, physical training, uh, then there will be more side effects of uh, metformin. And uh, in, this, in this case, we should be really careful prescribing it because sometimes Sometimes uh, uh, there are other problems. Uh, you always, uh, one always should consult the doctor, and it should be done individually. You shouldn't. It shouldn't be just taken by people. I'm sorry. Timothy uh, Glinin, I wanted to ask about uh, your slide, uh, where you had an FKB and other signal pathways. Uh, uh, where uh, about pathways? Uh, is it known that this uh, type of uh, is it uh, extrapolation on uh, those mo molecules that are discovered both inside them and outside for some cell models? Yes, you understood it correctly. We are talking about cell experiments when. Uh, uh, different elements uh, influence pathways, and I just showed on the slide certain products uh, that have uh, those elements. It's extrapolation, and of course we need additional research to say that this product can influence us in this or that way.